thanks to the supporters of channel member Mark Gowans. Well, I've not been sacked, fingers crossed. I won't be given the boot at the end of my contract in the summer. I've not actually had a new contract yet, which is potentially a little alarming. But the club have amended next season's target to finish in the top half of the table like we did this year. So I'm hoping that means... They are kind of happy with what we did after all. And they'll be happy for us to just do it again next year. I hope. Hello, welcome to part eight of Wembley to Wembley. I'm Kevin. Coming up on today's episode, we have our season review, our summer transfers, and some behind the scenes footage from my recent trip down to Vale Farm at Wembley FC, showing you around the place, giving you an idea of the before situation we've got down at Wembley. Because as mentioned in the, uh, in the early episodes of this series, one of the great things we've got with working with Wembley in real life um, is not just the football manager save, which is going to be great, but they've had some big grant money come in to allow them to do loads of work on the ground this summer. It's already started. I'm going to be able to show you the before. We're going to be able to go back down and show you it as it's happening and we'll be able to show you the finished thing. So as we move up through the leagues in football manager, the setup down at Wembley in real life is going to move up as well. And um, I'm just, I'm going to take all the credit for it. I assume it was all thanks to me. We'll get onto some of that footage in a little while. But first, let's do our traditional season review at the end of our first season. It has been a challenging season. I mean, signing of the season has not been awarded. <laughs> There's no, there is no signing of the season. Oh, no, there is. Sorry, Josh Gray. I was looking for the star on the other side. Josh Gray, who came in and played 13 games. He's the signing of the season. Hezron Thothergill, by the way, was brilliant. It'd be lovely to have him back again next year. I suspect we won't be able to. But six appearances, four goals, three assists, and a 7.43. This is a guy who is clearly above the level of our football club. So uh, I imagine he'll go and play in the Vanarama North for Russia next year and uh, we'll never see the likes of him again. But we enjoyed him while we had him. Remember, we didn't do a huge number of transfers because obviously for a lot of the season, transfers were switched off in the save as well. So we're going to be getting properly stuck into the transfers today and starting to build a team in my own image. So the board were looking for us to finish in the playoffs. We ended up finishing ninth. Um, we were, what, eight points out? side of the playoffs which is not a disaster our average home attendance was 49 people which is two percent of our capacity i think it's going to be a little while before we need to expand to the stadium in game and uh, the board gave me a d for the season the supporters are disgruntled that the team could only achieve a top half combined counties league premier north division blah 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 yet when we get to see the goals they've set they they want that for the next five years now so are the fans really that disgruntled or were, your, or were your expectations just a little bit too high finance wise it's been a season of disaster because the club is not set up to function in a financially prudent manner we've stuck to our budgets all year long until the youth intake came in and what was i going to do not sign that youth intake that would be bonkers but it still led us to hemorrhage money over the course of the season. And I suspect that's going to be an issue we have as we move up through the leagues. I've said it before and said it again. Football manager isn't really built to be played down at tier nine. The game is modded to allow us to do it. And one of the things that it doesn't very accurately represent is how the finances work at this level. Because in real life, Wembley aren't paying player salaries at all. But in game, obviously we are. And because of that, and because we're only getting 49 people through the door, each paying not very much at all, the books just can't balance at this level. So we just have to move up the leagues. Hope we don't go into administration too many times along the way. There is rumours of a board takeover this summer as well. So maybe that will help clear some of the debts that we've got currently. Uh, this was our team of the year. So Whelan's in goal, who we did obviously replace as the season went on. And then a back four of Black, by McKinwa, who of course walked out on us because he's a monster. Lowest average rating of the back four though. So who needs him, eh? Antwi and then Turner, Martin and Brush at the base of the midfield, Hamilton and Pierce ahead of them, and then Garrick and Canerva up front. Hamilton, Garrick and Canerva, the only players getting into double figures for goals. Although well, to be fair, Sean Martin from defensive midfield nearly got there as well, and Seamus Black stat padded with a hat-trick in a cup competition. Best players average rating-wise, Black, Hamilton, Pierce, Garrick, that pretty much 
ties in with uh, with how I think the season has gone. Interesting that the tactical style has been listed as wing play when we don't play with any wingers and we're not using the wing play preset. So I guess whatever we've come up with must be quite close to the wing play setup. Um, but these were the end of season awards. Josh Hamilton winning player of the year and young player of the year with his 7.2 average rating. Josh Gray, as we know, signing of the season. Lincoln Garrick, top scorer. Hamilton, most assists and most man of the matches. Garrick also got a 7.2 average rating so he got the award for highest average rating um, and Antwi most passes complete we didn't win any of the competition awards but we did set some club records that are going to take some beating over the years I guess maybe not this one Lincoln Garrick I hope this one gets beaten quickly um, new record for most goals in a season with 15 Black with the one hat trick of the year sets a record for that Hamilton the assist record Whelan's with four clean sheets sets our clean sheet record it's pretty clear where we need to improve this coming year Hamilton sets most man of the matches uh, Nielsen worst discipline Remy Dallison is our youngest ever player at 15 years 273 days that's one that might not ever be broken Broken. Rajan Gill, our oldest player at not even 31. Fastest goal went to Josh Turner. Youngest goal scorer, which we saw in yesterday's episode, Russ Eddy, at 15 years, 349 days. And oldest goal scorer, Andreas Nielsen, at 28 years old. What an old man. Uh, we don't care too much about our manager timeline. And uh, this, is, this is the situation as it stands. 7th of May, we have had our budgets come in. So we've had a little bit of an increase in wage budget and been given a tiny transfer budget to spike the fact we're £83,000 overdrawn and that's only expected to get worse. Just football manager things, boys and girls. They also gave me a £20,000 scouting budget, which, let's be honest, we don't need a £20,000 scouting budget. I can't remember how you do this. I don't go into these screens very often. Um, it's here because we can now move this into our other budgets where it's going to be much more useful. So scouting budget can go into transfer budget and then that transfer budget can go into wage budget. And now all of a sudden we've got a sensible wage budget to work with. So I think that's fair. We don't need to scout. We'll do trials. We'll work with the players we've already got scouted. But this allows us to put together a team that hopefully can be quite competitive. I'm still working within my budgets. It's the board's fault if this happens. Not on me. I'm not having that. Um, we've already made a start on clearing some players out as well. Uh, George Brush um, should be on his way out of the club. He's not good enough. One Half a star and one and a half star of potential. Uh, we've also already got rid of Andreas Nielsen, who didn't want to be here. He was out of contract at the end of the season. As you can see, he's now considered a last resort signing. Shows the progress we're making as a club because he was one of our best players at the start of last season. And he's now a last resort signing. We've also got rid of Vaughan Orsi Dadamo, um, who really was hampered by not having a first name. That caused various problems. Um, and we're trying to bring in uh, a new defender. As you can see, very well scouted. My director of football has gone for this guy. Um, I'm kind of happy for my director of football to draft guys in. Um, but the majority of our transfers are going to be done once we get to the 1st of July non-contract players are available and we'll uh, we'll bring in some free transfers if we look at the squad that we're building from for next season most of them are going to be gone so we are basically a clean slate plus that youth intake that came in last year there's not a huge number of these players that i'm absolutely desperate to give new contracts to uh, if we have a look through i mean there's a couple of them that we might give new contracts to joe haley for example josh gray so some of the guys we signed later on in the season we might try and tie back down again but even someone like lincoln garrick He's a two-star current ability, two-and-a-half-star potential player. Yeah, he got 15 goals for us, but it's 15 goals in 31 games. It's not a great goal return. At this level, it's not too hard to get a player getting 30 or 40 goals a season. So I think we are very much going to be doing a full-on rebuild this summer and the team is going to look very different at the start of the season to what it did at the end of the season and that's one of the main reasons why we didn't use the real life players because they would have been gone now anyway so say goodbye to most of these boys like I say I'll have a ponder some of them might get new contracts most of them won't and while I'm pondering that you can watch the first clip from my trip down to Wembley. So it's time we talked about the plan for this grant money that's come in for the renovations here at Vale Farm. So this is the ground as is at the moment. And the renovation money, the grant money, is being used 
to really snazzy this place up. You can see over on this far side, all the seats have already been taken out over there because they're being replaced by some new seats. They're also down this end, gonna be putting a proper roof on there and sorting that area out. If you watch my match day vlog earlier in the season, that's where I just kind of stood in front of those tables. I'll go over and show you there in a bit, but that's all being set up to be proper seating. They're gonna put proper seats on top of these areas over here as well and a proper roof. So if it's pouring down to the extent it was when I was here before, that'll, uh, that'll keep people dry over that side as well. And then the bulk of the grant money is being spent on the changing rooms. So we can go in and show you the changing rooms as well. So we've got the home changing rooms here. So these are being completely redone. So this is all going to be coming out. That wall there is all going to be coming out and it's going to be replaced by individual like player seating areas. They're going to have the floor redone with a big Wembley club badge in there through into the showers. This is all going to be redone. This changing room setup that they've got here at the moment is about 30 years old, so it's long overdue, a revamp, and we're going to get to see all of this be done over the course of the summer as well. The plan is this work is all going to be complete by August for the start of the new season. I think there's a very good chance this series will still be going on in August. So if we just come through this way as well, we've got the officials changing rooms. You don't need to go in there. But this is the away team changing room. So a little bit smaller, as you would expect. But this is getting the renovation treatment as well. So new showers, new benches. Don't think they're gonna get a big Wembley badge on the floor in here. And I mean, I've suggested they take out the radiators and turn off the hot water in the away changing rooms, but apparently that's not the done thing. They're bigger men than I. Oh, boys and girls, wonderful stuff. The board have seen the light, seen that I am the future and have decided to offer me a new one-year contract where they want me to work within my wage budget, strive to make progress on and off the pitch, repair the club's financial damage, which is easier said than done, and then five years of finishing the top half of the league we're currently in. Obviously, we're going to be looking to get promoted before then. I'm also obviously going to try and get a little bit more money out of them. You know, we've got a got bills to pay can i have a little bit more no okay fine fine i realize i might be pushing it didn't necessarily meet all my targets last year so let's not push it too hard and um, we are making more progress on getting players out of the club as well um just to clear space for the first of july we want as blank a slate as possible so george brush has gone josh hamilton has gone lincoln garrick has gone we've signed this guy that other guy we tried to get went somewhere else but we have signed a 37 year old William Worry um, who's Northern Irish four stars of current ability he can play anywhere up the middle of the pitch we've brought him in to play as one of our DMs he's six foot four and he's a good leader so he's just going to come in and sit at the base of our midfield be a threat from set pieces and probably be our captain never played outside of Northern Ireland before well that all changes now because he's made it to Wembley Lovely stuff. We've also set a bunch more players as available for release. Um, a few of them did get contracts. Um, obviously, we've got some of the youngsters that have been given contracts, but we gave Joe Haley a contract. Uh, Balogun already had a longer contract from when he came in. Um, where's the right back? I forget his name. Josh Gray has been offered a contract. We're just waiting for him to sign it. Um, and Archie Kieran have also offered a contract too as well. Charlie Whelan's, I think we probably just release him because he's on a non-contract and we know he's not good enough. So let's just release Charlie Whelan's. Sorry, Charlie, you just weren't getting the job done. We've also offered Mark Johnson a contract. Yeah, so it's the, the guys who are the better guys who've been offered contracts, but the vast majority of this lot... Um, so all of those players, probably not, and they're going to be released, and that's going to leave us with quite a small squad, but oodles of available budget to play with. So promising stuff. So this is the area that I stood when I was here earlier in the season, in the pouring rain. This roof leaked. Obviously, tables and chairs, not really ideal for viewing football from, but this is all part of the renovations that are happening. And in fact, if we wander down here just a little bit, you can see that they are already making a start on that. So there is a, a wall being walled there. Some kind of man with a real job device 
and a big bag of sand, which presumably is for them to play with during their breaks. And then you can see all the chairs that have already been ripped out over there. So work has already begun. Obviously, the moment we started the save, they knew the club was going places. So we've got to start the renovations now. Anyone who's played football manager knows how long that wait is between hearing about getting your new stadium and your new stadium being ready to go. So we have to start now. So by the time we get this club to the Football League, it's ready. Massively in favour of there being a mobile phone mast here as well. Those lot down the road with their powered by a uh, mobile phone company that I'm not going to mention who I happen to use and I can never get signal for in the big stadium. They could learn from this. I've got a phone signal here. Five bars. Didn't have that, didn't have that the other day in the big one. So there's a little gantry area where they film the matches from. They did offer me the chance to go up there, but that's the route up there. I mean, half of that is not even touching the floor. So you know what? As much as I'm sure you'd love a shot from up there, not a chance. So there we have the away dugout, which is, you don't see a lot of this these days, a legitimate dugout. It is dug out and below the level of the pitch. And then over here, we've got my seat. Obviously, I sit in one of these big comfy ones at the back. Got the nice logos and things on there as well. This one is where I sit that anyone who's been a naughty boy and needs a timeout, that's the naughty step. So if you ever see anybody sat there, that's because they've been bad and they've been put on the naughty step. And this, of course, is my view from the edge of the dugout marching out of my technical area, Mikel Arteta style. And this is what I can see. Specifically, what I can see is potential. Is that cheesy enough for you? So we've made it through to the 1st of July. A few more signings happening, or a few more ins and outs. Kevin Smith, not that one, left to go to Forest Row. And then we continued raiding Northern Ireland. So having already signed William Worry, um, we've signed Ryan McNichol, who is a Northern Irish striker who got a whole... I mean, he did score a goal last season. So that's a positive. Uh, so he's in. Uh, we've also got Jonah Galbraith, who's a goalkeeper who's not very good, but has got lots of potential and was happy to come in as a backup. So he's in as our backup goalkeeper. We don't yet have a first choice goalkeeper. And then Aaron Harris, a 29-year-old centre-back who can also play right back. Again, plenty of experience playing in Northern Ireland. So with those boys in and with the contracts that have expired out... There you go. So they're the guys who left at the end of their contracts. The squad is is not large. I mean, if we if we sort it by the ones who actually exist, there's those grayed out players on there. It's a first team squad of 15 players, and we're including the likes of Remy Dallison, Rob Harley in that number as well. So there's definitely players that need bringing in. It's a solid youth setup. Um, we've got lots of good young players with lots of potential. We have handed out a lot of contract offers to a lot of those which does mean that our committed spending is a little bit higher than I thought it would be because they've all gone from £5 a week to £20 a week contracts, which is the minimum I can offer them as professionals, but also roughly what a first teamer earns. So again, football manager, not really designed to be played at this level. We do get the odd challenge like this come along from time to time. If you look at the squad planner, it's pretty clear what we need to do, where we need to strengthen. We need a first choice goalkeeper. We need another guy who can play left back. We're actually not too bad at centre back, especially when you've got Dallas and Antwi as youngsters not around the place Haley and Harris starting partnership Worry can drop back there if need be then we've got the two youngsters and then at right back again we've got Josh Gray as a starter and then Rob Harley can be his backup which is fine uh, Worry and Martin will be our starters at defensive midfield as it stands currently we probably need a couple more to play in that role and then we've got Kieran Pierce and Martin as well who can play up there but really it's Kieran and Pierce as the starters currently with the whole of the midfield depending on what we find we might be changing the shape of this midfield. If we find wide players, we'll play with wide players. But we need probably three or four midfield players in general and then we'll figure out what the tactic is going to be from there and then up front Balogun will get a proper chance because he's got a contract Ryan McNichol as well and of course Anton Canerva still here from last year we probably need another striker in so 
It's not a huge amount of rebuild that needs doing, but there are key players in key positions that need bringing in. The media think we're looking good for fifth already before we've even done our transfers. We don't have anybody in the Dream 11, though, so they're not that confident about us. And the board have changed their mind again and have once again decided that they would like to see us get into the playoffs. So the job now, collect lots of awesome players on free transfers. Easy, right? So this is the clubhouse area. They've got this massive function area bit. This is where the players will uh, have their post-match meal. Interesting, I thought. Multiple brands of mustard, which that's a club I'm on board with. There's, uh, there's at least two different types of mustard there. We've got the Frenches, but we've also got the Heinz. As the originator of Mustard News, I am in support of choice. At the same time, one of my first actions now is going to be to get some Coleman's in because these boys need proper mustard. So just been told a wonderful story. This is where the players will come out of the changing rooms on match day, down through the tunnel here, and they close these gates. And if you notice, on top of the gate, you can see there is a lion. There is another lion down there. So when these gates are closed, as the players come out, it's the lion's den. So we come out like this. So obviously we have there. This is Wembley, home of the Lions sign up there. And then we're fully caged in as we come out here through the cage. And then of course, out onto the pitch where the magic happens, which is awesome. And you got a view of that arch thing over there in the background, which I guess is quite nice to look at as you come out too. But there's our, uh, there's our little gate top lion looking down on us lovely 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 oh we have a problem it's the 10th of july as you can see we've only signed two players one goalkeeper on 50 pounds a week who is going to be a good goalkeeper for us very happy with him as a signing um and then alexander stefanjason um who's another attacking midfielder so we needed more attacking midfielders clearly but we're now massively over budget because those youth contracts from before, which I thought had already been taken into account, because it didn't show on the committed spending, because I specifically showed you it. The game has screwed me over. So we're now in debt and our scouting budget, over our wage budget by £100 a week, and we've only brought in two players. So we, we can't sign anybody else. We have a first team squad of, and I guess this isn't that unusual at this level. We've got a first team squad of 16 plus a bunch of kids. It looks like we're going with the kids this year, folks. The media still think we might do okay. That is not the summer I had planned. We are playing in the Wembley Cup against a bunch of Belgian teams, which is nice. But... Yeah, that's problematic. I guess we now focus on loans for the rest of the summer and make do with what we've got and complement with a few loans and then fill out the rest of the first team squad with young players, none of whom seem to be ready for the first team. We can move Dylan up into the first team. Um, there's still some very significant gaps in this squad planner that we're going to have to fill with loans. We need to find free loans. The game properly has screwed me over there. Never trust this. So I'm in the boardroom now, and this is chock full of football history. The England team uh, for the 1966 World Cup actually trained here. So there they are on the pitch here. And there's some uh, various bits of memorabilia as a thank you. There we go. Photo presented to Wembley Football Club by Mr. Alf Ramsey, England team manager, in token of his thanks for the loan of the ground in preparation for the World Cup. Got Bobby Moore there in the dugout. Loads of kits from other teams who came and trained here as well. So all original kits on the wall, which is, I mean, it's just so cool. All this awesome stuff. And then, of course, stuff from the uh, 
from the Terry Venables thing that we've talked about before. It's, uh, it's awesome in here. And there's the badge on the wall as well. But this, this is our boardroom. So when I'm having interactions with the board in game, they're happening in here. This is where I'll get fired or get my new contracts. I ain't getting fired. This is too good to get fired from. This is awesome. And then this is the clubhouse. All looks very snazzy. Get the matches on up there. Get a few pre-match drinks. They've also very kindly sorted me out of a shirt as well, which of course I will be returning the favour in the near future when we can bring back some of our Lelujo edition shirts for these guys. That might be ambitious, but you know, we've got to have goals on and off the pitch. Well, we're trying to use loans in both directions to solve this problem. So firstly, we've brought a bunch of, bunch of loans in to fill out the squad. So Dan Dougal is a 25-year-old central midfielder on loan from Deeping Rangers, which is less than half a mile from my old house. So it's good to bring good to bring a local boy in. Uh, we've also got Leo Priestley, who's another midfielder. He's on loan from Witham. Uh, we've got Chris Edwards, who's a centre-back on loan from Worcester City. Uh, we've got Alfie Terry, who's yet another midfielder on loan from Dagenham and Redbridge. And then we've got Ryan Cornish, who's a left back, or I guess a centre back who can cover at left back. We only had one left back in the squad. He's on loan from Bromsgrove. And then Oliver Ward is a striker who's on loan from Welling. And then lastly, Jamie Sant is an attacking midfielder who's on loan from Bedworth United. So they fill the squad out nicely. And now we're loaning out some of these youngsters who are on £20 a week to try and get some of the salaries covered. So we're loaning them out with fees being paid, ones that weren't going to be anywhere near the team. And with all of that going on, we're a little bit closer to being back in budget. One or two more of these youngsters loaned out and we're back under our budget again. If we can get four or five of them loaned out, we might even be able to sign somebody permanently which would be nice, but we do need to deal with the, the scouting budget issue, which seems to be getting worse. And I don't really know how, because we're no longer in a position where we can scout anybody. So, for example, if we were to just look at midfielders and say, oh, I wonder if he's any good. Let's try and scout him. We, we literally can't scout anybody now. Um, but we still seem to be going further and further in debt on the scouting budget. And I don't really know why. I guess it could potentially be players that we've already assigned to scouting. Um, so I guess these guys are maybe being re-scouted or, I mean, we've got a lot of players who we've asked to be scouted at one point or another. My assumption is they all go on hold now. I mean, they are on hold. So you would think they're not costing us anything. We'll see what happens with that as the season goes on. I guess. But all of that leads us to the start of the season. By the way, we absolutely destroyed the Wembley Cup and did lose to Crawley Down Gatwick, though, which isn't a location. Well, I guess Crawley is. Crawley, Crawley Down Gatwick. No, that is the full name of the club. We lost to them, but we did destroy the whole of Belgium in the Wembley Cup, which was nice. And in the first round of the FA Cup, which will be in tomorrow's episode, we play Hassocks off of the Southern Combination League Premier Division, which is a league equivalent level to ours. We've dropped. We were 229 before. Now we're 230. We're now worse than the Turkish Local Amateur League, which really doesn't say a lot for Belgium, does it, that we destroyed all those Belgian teams? But we play them, and the squad is looking at least a little bit more squaddy than it was before. So we've got a couple of decent goalkeepers. Um, Cornish, although he'll probably play centre-back, is there to cover for Johnston at left-back. Josh Gray and then the youngsters as backups at right-back. I mean, Rob Harley's not actually in the first-team squad at the moment. We moved him back down to the under-21s. But he's there to come up if need be. A couple of the centre-backs can go out to right-back. And then we've got Haley and Cornish, who can play centre-back along with Harris, the new boy. We've got Chris Edwards, who's is on, in on loan, plus the two youngsters, Dallison and Antwi. We've got plenty of options at centre-back. Defensive midfield, now we've brought a few in. We're looking a lot stronger. Worry's probably going to be our starter, like he was going to be all along. He's the new club captain. He's now turned 38 as well, which is jolly nice. Uh, Sean Martin, who's young enough to be his son. I mean, does the maths work to make him his grandson? Probably not legally. Um, but a lot of young players knocking about with William Worry, and then the three loans who were just in there, really, to make up the numbers. 
Um, I don't think there's a restriction at this level on the number of loan players that we can have in the squad at any one time. So we can just keep bringing in loans for as long as they're free. And I think that's okay if we run into a problem there. We'll worry about it when it happens. And as attacking midfield, Jamie Sant uh, comes in as the best attacking midfielder we've got. And then we've got a bunch of young players who can compete with him, of which we include Dom Pierce, Russ Eddy, who, of course, was very good at the end of last season. Dom Pierce played a lot last season, plus relative new boy Archie Kieran and actual new boy Alexander Stefanishin, um, all there to compete with Sam. And then up front, we need to see if uh, Balogun is going to be any good. McNichol, who got one goal last year, be interested to see if he's any good. I feel like a lot of the heavy lifting here is going to have to be done by Anton Canerva, um, and hopefully Oliver Ward can can score some goals for us as well. But I am a little bit worried about where the goals are going to come from because Balogun never really looked like he was any good. I mean, we only started him once. I'm being a little harsh on him. And one of those substitute appearances was in goal. So hopefully Balogun comes good as well and we can start grabbing some goals. But I think it's a fairly solid squad. This is the 11 we're going to play for the FA Cup game. That'll be up first tomorrow. Very different looking players, but a similar looking system, which I did not expect to happen this summer. But having all my transfers taken away from me did kind of derail the plan to change the tactic. If anyone wants to loan one of my young players, let me know. They're all available. If you've enjoyed that, please make sure you leave a nice big thumbs up on there for me. Subscribe to the channel for daily Football Manager videos. And thank you very much for watching.